Hello and welcome to Mebo My Command Settings tutorial. This will be a short one because most of the settings are explained together with other tutorials. For example, the macro settings are explained in the macro tutorial. Hot key settings are explained in the hot key tutorial and so on. Now, generally, uh, you would have settings and command lists. And if you save a command list, it would save the settings together with the command. I explained this already in the start of the tutorial. I can only repeat this once again. So you see it's written there in the secret. Your actual settings will be saved together with all these commands. If you look in the XML file using Notepad, notepad then you will see uh, that there are first there are the settings, and then after the access to all the commands. Uh, okay. If you load a profile in here, the settings might be loaded. Might be because it depends on this checkbox. If this is not checked, you would keep your settings and load the command list. If this is checked, it would load the settings from the command list. So you can choose if you want to use different settings for each profile, you would check this one. If you, if you would like more, it depends on your usage, maybe. Then some people will prefer to use one standard settings, maybe for a lot of different desktop applications. Use uh, just one kind of settings, and they would keep the LMP settings up to date. But when you leave the program and you reopen the program, uh, this one would have saved all the settings that uh, will get loaded as the program starts. Because there must be some kind of setting. And if you have unchecked this one, these will always be loaded first. Now here I have an autoload profile. You see the file name. I have browsed for it. It was in the Explorer, uh, Windows Explorer. Uh, it, was shown, it is shown here. I have enabled it. I have started the program. It got loaded. And it was not checked. So even if you, if you had loaded some settings before, but you could not override them. If you check this one, it would override these settings that I have saved here. And at the start of the program, it would load the settings from the profile that were saved in the editor. At the moment that I have saved in the editor, this command. So I'm just make that one clear or unclear. I was trying to explain that also here in the general toolkit stuff and each toolkit here, which they would be granted. Now, if you leave the program and you have loaded the profile, if you check this one, <coughs> it would save with the actual settings on the last loaded profile. So, that one. Some users might know how to make this program start together with Windows. And some users might not know this. I will show you how to go first to this LMP folder. This is the folder of the program. You see it's quite dirty, so I use a Windows installer. But I have no problem with this path as long as I don't have to use the administrator right for the program. This is fine. It's kind of an advantage. And uh, so using this button, you get to the folder of no problem. And we would need a uh, shortcut to this .exe file here. We would my command .exe. And to make the program start together with Windows, maybe somebody does not know this, just click on the startup folder and open it. And just throw the shortcut here, like it has been already. Okay. And it would start together with Windows. If you want that. And if you define an auto load profile, it would load an auto load profile. It would load the profile directly at the start, maybe with the settings or with the standard settings of the program. As you wish, you can always check, always listen. And it would directly start listening. Together with Windows, you can also check Start Minimize. It would not even be visible. It would only see this in the taskbar. And you're ready. So use speech recognition when you start Windows. You can make your command to use it on the desktop for this and that, copy and paste and whatever. Uh, be creative. This is a possible exercise that you could do. Okay. Now, this one would give you the standard window style, like this one. You see the folder, the buttons on top. You can make this window just the same. This would not be no longer be visible. 
So he would do nothing. He probably could be on the bottom still. But he would have a higher border and he could be on top. And you would lose transparency for the lock. So now I can have a background transparency here. You see? If I would have a window like this, this is not possible in this window mode. This is why I have not chosen this window mode for streaming. But you can, some people like this window mode, they see buttons. There would be no menu menu, because the menu is only the buttons are here. It would just be standard border, but it, you would lose transparency if you choose this one. Now, you can also make the window reappear in the same size and position. This is maybe interesting if you have created like this one here and that one. Make it bigger and make you lose the scroll bar. If you have created the on screen display lock, remove the scroll bar. So you see, you have created such an on screen display lock, have a hotkey for the lock, then remove it, show it again. And the next time that you start the program, you want to have the same position and stuff again. So you would choose to restore the window and save your settings to the exit, save your settings to the profile when you exit. And you have an isolated profile. Okay. Now, the internet cat would check for this version number on the website. It would not download anything. This would check automatically a program start. This checks if you click on it. It would not download anything, you see. And if you click here, it would just go to the Lisa Micromat main page, except if you, uh, if you have the full version on the license key, then it would directly use your credentials, which are hidden in the license key, and open your download page, very convenient, and you would directly see how many licenses you have left, and you could uh, download the latest version. Okay, this is how that works. You can choose to have your audio feedback, only triggered when the command was given by hotkey. If you give the command by voice or automatic, or not at all. And in order to have the hotkey response, uh, the response must be allowed in the editor. So this is off, for example. Uh, no, now it's off. I have to give it to the system. Okay, if, if it is enabled, then, then, then it would work, right? Yes. Right now. The hotkey stuff is the same. The hotkey tutorial, the global stuff is the hotkey is the same. I will cover this in the hotkey tutorial. This would be covered in the macro tutorial. This in the log tutorial. Here about the color tab. Okay, I think I've covered this in the starter tutorial. You can change font sizes here with one click. If I click on a color first, I cannot change this one. Nothing happens. I have to look at the red one. Let's go somewhere else. I come back and then it goes. Yeah, so you can change. One thing to note is you can ha go higher here. If the font is one has very big fonts, you can see the menu in here. It's pretty good. Uh, it's with the cycler. The cycler does not affect so much. It just drops a percentage. Yeah. Now it's back to the bottom. So if you want to have even bigger buttons, maybe for a 4K monitor, so you like big fonts, then you can do so. Okay. Now we have all this. Maybe this is the brightness slider for a color. So if you want to have a color with the text less bright, but keep the tone, you can pull it this higher or lower from black to white to the color. This is the alpha channel always. You can apply the alpha channel even to the size menu here. I have covered this in the log tutorial already. Okay, these are the settings. 